Step smacking the squinching ace, tasting good and making good, buzzing cool, talking high, walking fast, living ever, giving cool, fizzing Pepsi. A few days ago, Kawasaki just announced the new up version of the Z900RS. The Z900RS was their awesome retro launched in 2018 based on the Z900 platform. The new RS was styled and changed to evoke the spirit of the legendary Z1A and Z1Bs of the early to mid-1970s. A perfect UJB with its 948cc inline 4, but upgraded suspension, brakes and chassis geometry gave it much better handling and feel. Released to compete with bikes from Triumph like the Thruxton and the Speed Twin or BMW's R9T and let's not forget Yamaha's wonderful XSR900. Both the RS and the SE from 2018 on were perhaps lacking a few of the upmarket specs that some of the other models have. Kawasaki seemed to have rectified that with this new version called the Yellow Ball. Let's get into the details. And while Kawasaki Z900 RS and SE editions were very well received by media and prospective owners alike, there were more than a few little niggles where owners had to upgrade and change in order to make the bike more to their tastes. Has this new version, the 2022 Yellow Ball, available this fall, fall 2021, rectified some or all of those issues? Well, listen on and let's find out. Launched in 2018, Kawasaki Z900RS and SE were essentially exactly the same bike, only with a slightly different paint scheme. The SE, harkening back to the Z1As of the 70s, with their root beer paint scheme on the tank. Both bikes, though, the Z900RS and the SE edition, were based on Kawasaki's standard sport model, the Z900, although they had shorter gear ratios up spec brakes, up spec suspension, and a beefier subframe to carry a passenger. And while power is slightly down in the Z900 RS compared with its cousin, the Z900, 110 horsepower at 8,500 RPM, the torque comes in at well over 2,000 RPM earlier at 6,500 RPM, designed to more match the early bikes of the 70s and give a more flexible riding experience. And this is a bike I loved so much that I bought one, but no bike is perfect Despite how close this bike comes in my eyes to being perfect, there are some definite issues, as you can see in my previous videos. There are some standard mods that a lot of owners of Z900 RS bikes do. Some of them seem to have been incorporated into this new up spec RS SE edition of the Z900 RS. So what do we know? Well, the first thing that we notice, of course, is what it looks like. Being an owner, I've often wondered what the bike would look like with gold forks. And bing! There they are. Running your eyes over the bike, you'll notice those anodized gold forks, 41 millimeters, the same as the original, and three-way adjustable, match the yellow spring on the Olin S46 shock that's been put in at the back. This has an aluminum body, a 46 millimeter piston, internal air gas chambers separated by a floating piston, resulting in superior sense of grip and handling, according to Kawasaki. And believe me, this is needed, particularly in the comfort department, where the original shock is a little like a jackhammer and that is one of the items that many current owners go on to replace either with a Wilbur's shock or an Olin's S46. Well done Kawasaki, you've obviously been pouring through the forums on this one. Going back to those gold anodized front forks, they are exactly the same as the ones on the Z900 RS and SE from 2018 on, but their base settings, their default settings have been changed to better emulate the feeling of the stock shock on the back now, the Olin's S46. In their press release, Kawasaki say they wanted to make this higher spec SE model reminiscent of the tuning performed by enthusiasts when the original Z1 was around. But perhaps if I were a more cynical person, I might say it's because while looking through all of those forums on the Z900RS, they did note how many owners were saying they had an awful experience with that rear shock. The next thing your eyes will notice is those gorgeous gold anodized wheels which match both the front forks and the almost yellow spring of the shock at the back. However, they do clash a bit with the tank on the yellow ball edition. Perhaps it's just me, but the original yellow ball edition never really appealed to me. I can't help thinking that this red and gold model would have gone better with the anodized wheels, the front gold shocks and the Olin at the back. I hope you're listening Kawasaki. 
And while this is a one-off aftermarket paint scheme done by a dealer in Australia, I'm hoping Kawasaki take a cue from it. After all, the original Z1As and Z1Bs did come with this exact paint scheme. Continuing to run your eye down the aesthetically pleasing lines of this bike, as an owner you may notice some other subtle changes. For instance, the fuel injector side panels are now blacked out, as is the radiator trim. That is something many owners on many of the forums have done themselves. Congratulations Kawasaki if you picked up on that and actually implemented it. That's a good sign. But it's not all cosmetic changes. Not only has the suspension been changed, but so have the brakes on this up spec version. Again, many owners of the Z900RS have criticized the brakes. While they're adequate, they're not as sharp as many of us think they should be. I've changed the brake lines to steel braided brake lines, while others have gone even further to improve the feel and feedback even more. Changing the front four piston radially mounted Kawasaki branded calipers to Brembo calipers, and even in some cases, the master cylinder to a Brembo master cylinder. And perhaps once again, because of perusing the forums or getting owner feedback, Kawasaki have done the same, changing the radially mounted four-pot Kawasaki branded calipers to Brembo 4.32s, adding a smaller diameter master cylinder to increase the pressure and installing steel braided brake lines on the bike. But don't let me put any prospective owners off. This is a wonderful bike. And while I've talked about some minor issues, they are just that, minor. We all like to farkle our bikes, and so owners typically pick on what they consider to be perhaps the weaker points where Kawasaki could have done a better job. Well, I'm pleased to say, at least on a couple of those points, the suspension and the brakes, Kawasaki have made that improvement with this up spec SE version coming out in 2022. However, all of that said, there is still one major upgrade that I think Kawasaki should have done with all of the models they're launching next year, not just this upspec SE version, and that is the OEM stock tyres that they launch the bikes with. These Dunlop GPR 300s are awful. So if, as a prospective owner, you are planning on getting either the Z900RS or the upspec SE next year, I suggest you put away a fair chunk of change in order to immediately shuck the Dunlops and put on some Road 5s or some equivalent that will make the bike handle the way it should. Another area many prospective owners may be put off by is the fact that there isn't a 2 into one exhaust on either side of this bike. That might be a nice touch for the future, although I'm perfectly happy with the 4 into one that I have on my stock one. And perhaps a personal gripe I have is I have always been an absolute lover of the original Z1B's Candy Tone Blue, which is going to be launched on the Z900RS Standard Edition next year. It's just a pity that it won't be getting the gold anodized forks, the Olin shock, and the gold mag wheels on it. So come on, Kawasaki. While the Yellow Ball Edition is a step in the right direction, let's see the Candy Tone Blue and Yellow as well with the upspec version. And let's see the Red and Gold version that I showed earlier. Perhaps Kawasaki have been looking on the forums to see what the current owners say. If so, well done to them, because they have definitely upspec some very key areas on the original bike that definitely needed some attention. However, there are others that still probably need looking at. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider, out.